Let me welcome Carl on stage. You do a short love in, should work very nicely. Switch the screens. Okay, means the Apple needs to connect. Okay. I think you need to share again. Maybe Good. Yep. Yeah, so we're going to just go through quickly um, like how we use uh, Tableau over at uh, HelloFresh and um, how it works for um, essentially data-driven marketing, which we've already uh, talked about. So I'm Carl, I do uh, paid search and display at HelloFresh, and um, so I just wanted to show you quickly, um, I guess if you're not aware with uh, HelloFresh, we deliver, um, like we, uh, we're a meal kit delivery service, and um, with that, uh, we, we have to get the message out, so a lot of um, marketing. So I just really want to jump quickly to go um, say a lot of you are marketers, um, as we've already seen from the initial visualization. So um, how do you connect to uh, Google Analytics API, choose the right dimensions, uh, do a quick uh, visualization? So the idea is that um, it democratizes data, that it's not BI or management that has the data, but everybody should have access to it and that everybody um, should be able to uh, analyze with that. So I always fight that even down to our interns, they all have uh, Tableau licenses um, because we feel that like it's very important that everybody's being able to analyze, optimize, and make better decisions um, and not just from the higher level. So maybe just like to really uh, jump in, everybody here probably uses Google Analytics. So very quickly, um, super easy to connect, probably aside from Excel, you're going to be your primary data source. So you just uh, connect there, and then here you can choose your, uh, which uh, property and view you want, your date ranges and so on. And then here you would have um, what would be your dimensions and metrics, so things that you would uh, see in the uh, Google Analytics interface. So instantly you're already at a much better leveling, because if you go to GA, you only have the option to choose a secondary dimension, and not much more. And here you can really pull as much data as you can and cut um, data and see different kinds of analyses that you wouldn't normally find if you were to do it on Excel or if you were to just pull it from um, like the web interface. Um, a quick one I want to mention is that like if you notice um, like the, the measures, you wouldn't see things like uh, bounce rates or you wouldn't see things like conversion rates. So we're going to cover that quickly on how you need to use uh, calculated fields because um, that allows you to really um, view different levels of data um, and it's not something that you might, might find um, you were looking for if you're very new to Tableau. So we'll just like do a quick demo. Um, so I think maybe if, you, if it's the first time you've used Tableau or you're thinking about using it, and you would say, okay, I don't really know about like uh, where to drag all these ideas. So um, but when I do my onboarding, I always just say, well, essentially just choose one, like hold control, hold click, and I say, let's start with a question. I want to see sessions. So just choose that, and um, this is like my favorite button, just the show me tab there, because you can just like essentially start moving around the interface. So you don't see anything here because we're at year. Let's move that day, and very quickly you have you can just like do different um, visualizations of your data. So I think that's like a, something that's uh, very straightforward. Um, you don't need to have like this expertise to start building something uh, very quickly. So um, let's say we want that um, by day. Um, our sessions, then we say, um, okay, I want to also bring in, let's say, transactions here. But um, you want to get your conversion rate, which is um, what wasn't available in the original interface. So you go here, um, we can do a calculated field. So essentially what you have to do is uh, create a field, so conversion rate, and you just have to say, um, get, get all my, sorry, sum of transactions divided by sum of uh, sessions here. And then you um, you will see like calculation is valid. Uh, so very quickly, you have a conversion rate. So if you drag that in, um, you will have like uh, your sessions, 
transactions, and very quickly, um, very quickly, you can have like a convert conversion rate uh, right here. So, um, you know, we're a cooking company, and I, um, when I practiced for this, I thought it would be like a you know cooking show for TV. So we make like one quick demo, and then like I go to the next tab where um, everything is else is already there. So let's say if you put a bit of effort, we can have something like this. Um, so we can have all our metrics. Um, you just want to do daily monitoring of your um, of your traffic. Um, did, did, did the website crash one day, or like did, was there a sale that like um, caused a spike in traffic? Uh, this is all anonymized data, by the way. It's not our <laughs> real data. Um, in case legal gets back to me. Um, so um, so here we have like by day, and you say okay, that's just good for um, daily tracking. So we can just like go here change the pill and we say, um, I want to really analyze it by a uh, week number. So in case you do weekly reporting, that's just something you can do quickly. So here you have weekly performance. And here um, I made one where we focus on the weekday. And for everyone here who does like marketing or online marketing, this is something that's quite relevant. So if you look here, you're going to see um, like users and new users on like uh, one dimension. And you're going to see, okay, most of, most of the traffic comes from Tuesday and Wednesday. But if you look at the new user percentage, a lot of them actually comes in on Saturday and Sunday. So maybe your marketing strategy is using day parting. You're saying, well, I shouldn't be spending on the weekends, but actually that's where most of your users are coming in, and maybe those are the same users that are coming in on later days to potentially convert. So very quickly, um, with like, uh, very little effort, you're really seeing an impact that like, will determine your marketing mix, will determine like, uh, your channel optimization strategies, and so on. So let's go quickly, and we have the same thing here. Uh, we use a device category, and so we just pull a device category here. Uh, still the same metrics, so what I usually do is just like make a base one and keep duplicating the same tab. So we just click, you can click duplicate here, and um, essentially you just change the dimension. So here we say, oh, mobile conversion rates are very low, so maybe we should reduce marketing there. But then again, you see like most of your users and your new users are coming there. Um, so that tells you that, okay, maybe if you were only to look at the, base, uh, the baseline, you, didn't, you would have, wouldn't have thought it was like a worthy um, device area. And then you say, okay, that's really good. And so we, we do like a, uh, a split on like the level. So if you can bring in like an area, you can choose an area graph here. And here what I usually do, so if we delete that, is um, you can just like duplicate the same one. Go ahead, uh, do a quick table calculation percentage of total, and um, say, okay, we want to uh, calculate it down. And here you can see like it's always based on 100%. So very quickly we can see that like those peaks on Saturdays and Sundays with those new users, they're all coming from mobile devices. So again, very quickly, um, just to see uh, marketing insights um, right there. So maybe for some of you, it matters for um, location, to see like where are your hot areas and so on. So you can just like click um, state and sessions, go here quickly. Um, very little effort, um, you can just like drag it in there. I just usually duplicate it here, drag that here. And now we already have like some visualization on which areas we have. So let's say we were looking at like which areas we work well and which cities we work well. Um, so. Um, something that's like, okay, this is very nice to, um, uh, to look at, but like, um, not all the labels are present. So maybe um, if you were viewing it on like, um, uh, like a mobile device or so on, or if you're giving it on a presentation, you want something much more um, quickly. So we can do something that's like, um, we, we can rank um, areas here. So I want to see very quickly which, um, which cities do I rank very highly with. So here we have like um, this, the cities here, and we can even add state, so we can see top cities by um, state. But now it's a lot of data, and you have this like uh, you have to scroll down, and you know we apply a Pareto principle saying you really only want um, to focus on like the top ones. So what I would usually do very quickly is just to duplicate that, um, create that as a rank, and I would tend to rank that um, by le by uh, level for the state. So now it's always giving you like uh, Munich, for example, would be like uh, the highest traffic source for this state, and then for another state, um, you would get this. And what you can do is just like drag it over to a filter. Say I want the top three, 
and now you only have the top three for each area. So it's so really being able to focus on what's um, really important and not being, um, so there's a lot of data and it's your job as well to make sure that you can see which ones work well and um, which ones are more important. So again, uh, uh, cooking show style, um, here would be like what you would see on, um, on another visual uh, another viz for this. So um, you really just like get people to focus on what's the most impactful and um, you can also create a lot of like uh, custom metrics in this one. So I guess like maybe um, what I would just like cover um, quickly is like, uh, so we all use Google Analytics. So it's the same thing, you can drop your source, me your source menu here and you can dro uh, drop, let's say, transactions and you get like uh, a chart. But sometimes you want to group them together and you want to rename them and you can choose edit alias, but then you don't want to rename all of them at the same time. So what you can do is you can create a channel grouping so here's one that I made, which would be the same as um, your Google Analytics channel groupings. And what you just say is like, if it contains organic, then lump them all as organic. If it contains uh, CPC, that's my paid search. And once you do that, you can have like your channel groupings here. And so um, paid search would contain both Google and Bing, or email traffic would contain all your um, email providers and they will all be lumped there. And if we were to remove this, you would even get like the aggregated view. So the last thing I wanted to show is like, um, so we just changed that. This is still the same data as the first one. Um, what we just changed is the dimensions. So we look at campaigns. And if you're a marketer, you can have thousands, hundreds of thousands of campaigns, depending on like your campaign granularity. And here it's very difficult to see. So here we have like a CPO, and it's, uh, now it's very difficult to see which one I should focus on, which one is good, which one's bad. So what I tend to do is to use the same style. Um, so I would say I would rank by CPO. So just like split that here, do a quick table calculation and rank. So now they're ranked here and then like drop, drop that into a filter. So now we say, I want, a, I want to see every day what are my 10 most expensive campaigns. And the idea is that like, if you look at that graph, if you look at this dashboard next week, those 10 campaigns shouldn't be there anymore. Either they perform better, either you've paused them, um, and that's something that really saves you a lot of time. Um, and you can have the same one for your top 10 performing campaigns. So maybe like the last one I wanted to show, since I do feel I might be running out of time, um, is just to do like a quick uh, correlations. So here we have two fields, let's say um, CPC, which we can drag here. And if we put CTR here, we will have like a certain aggregation. And I want to see whether there's a correlation there um, by day. So you can just drag that into uh, detail, change that to day, for example. And they didn't choose the best example, but uh, um, like you, can, you, can, you can go and see trend lines and you, you get like a certain correlation here. But what I usually would do is like, um, so especially if you're using adjust and you're tracking millions of in-app events, you want to know which events actually do matter. So from HelloFresh's point of view, that would be like, if people look at our recipes or if people see like our product detail pages, do those matter? Do people not really care? So it allows you to say which events matter to you most. So for example, let's say you've been optimizing always for bounce rates, and that's something that like in this view actually doesn't matter. So you've been optimizing for the wrong KPI, and here is like a quick way to just really see which KPIs have a stronger correlation to your overall marketing goals, which here we've always put as conversion rate. So just to kind of like uh, quickly um, sum it up, so you know, if you put like a bit of effort, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not bragging, like it, it took me a very little time because like I was so good at Tableau, it took me a little time because it was very easy to once scrape a baseline table and then be able to create it. So you can just like have all your dashboards here, just drop them into, uh, it's an aggregation of worksheets and you can have their timing by day you can have there like all your device data. You want to see your top locations ranked. And here you can see every day like which are my 10 best performing campaigns, which are my 10 worst performing campaigns. And that really takes a lot of time, a lot of effort away from your marketing team. So the less time they spend digging for data and the more time they spend like actually optimizing, actually analyzing, it's better and it's better for your marketing campaigns, it's better for your company. And um, I'll just pa I'll pass on to Malta now.